All right, in this exercise, we are asked to find the average value of the function f of x and y equals xy over the quarter disk of radius 5 in the first quadrant of the xy plane. So first, let's sketch the domain of integration. It's the quarter disk of radius 5 in the xy plane. So it's going to look like this solid disk in the first quadrant. To compute the average value of f, we're looking for a number, the average output, if you will, of this function over this domain. And we get to it by integrating over this domain, let me call this d, the function divided by the area of the domain, which you can always compute by double integrating 1 over that domain. We're going to set this up in polar coordinates. So we'll have x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. The bounds on the radial coordinate go from 0 at the origin out to 5. And the bounds on theta go from 0 to pi over 2 because we're just in the first quadrant. OK, so now if I convert this expression to polar coordinates, we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2, 0 to 5 x times y is r cosine theta r sine theta. And then in the conversion, we pick up an r, then dr d theta. I will also convert the denominator, but it's not really necessary because I know from geometry what the area of the domain is. Let me just write it down, though, that this would be integrating from 0 to pi over 2, 0 to 5, 1 r dr d theta. So I'll write r dr d theta. For that integral in the numerator, I'm going to notice that the bounds on r and theta are constant. And then if you look at the integrand, it can be factored into a function of r times a function of theta. This next simplification I'm going to do is optional. So you could integrate this in what you might think of as the usual way. So first anti-differentiate with respect to r, evaluate on the bounds, then anti-differentiate with respect to theta. I'm going to write this as the product of two single dimensional integrals, one with respect to theta. So I'll say 0 to pi over 2 cosine theta, sine theta, d theta, and then 1 with respect to r, so 0 to 5 r cubed dr. So you can split it up like that whenever your bounds are constant and the integrand can be factored into a function of one of the variables times a function of the other. For the denominator, we're asked to find the area of the quarter disk of radius 5. So that's going to be the quarter disk of radius 5, so pi times 5 squared. That whole denominator is the area of this disk in the first quadrant. For that first integral, let's have u equal sine of theta, so that du is cosine of theta d theta. Then that first integral becomes a definite integral with respect to u. I'll leave off the bounds for now. And then sine theta, cosine theta, d theta is just u du. OK, let's go back and do the bounds. When theta is 0, u is sine of 0, so that's 0. And when theta is pi over 2, u is sine of pi over 2, which is 1. OK, so that's my new first integral after the conversion with u substitution. And then for the second one, let me go ahead and write r to the fourth divided by 4 evaluated from 0 to 5. We're going to divide that by 25 pi over 4. OK, almost done. That first integral is u squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1. I think I can go ahead and write 1 half. So that's u squared over 2. Plug in 1, you get 1 half. Subtract off plugging in 0, but that's just 0. So 1 half times, uh, similarly, we'll write 5 to the fourth over Four. And then dividing by that fraction is like multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'll write times 4 over 25 pi. How about I write 5 squared pi, just so it's clear what the cancellation is. And cancel out the 4s, reduce this. And we're left with 25 over 2 pi.